Amen. Good morning. Welcome. It's good to have you all here this morning. Welcome to those who are visiting with us and those who are watching online. Just a few announcements before we begin this morning. Reminder that following the service today, the United Methodist Women are hosting a pasta luncheon in the Fellowship Hall, so please feel free uh, to stay around for lunch after that. Following the service, all of the kids, are, there are bags for the kids. There are some in the narthex here that they can pick up on the way out, as well as there are some in the Fellowship Hall, and I think maybe some in the state room as well, so make sure the kids all go home with a bag. This coming Wednesday, if you liked a Christmas carol, please come to the sanctuary at 545. We're going to do a live stream and record some caroling for those in the care centers and then head out to Christmas carol at some shut-in homes and then back to the church for dinner. And speaking of Wednesday night for dinner, we have been enjoying Welcome Home Wednesday since September and we continue to do so, but we need some folks to sign up to provide meals starting in January. And there is a clipboard that will be coming around, uh, so please, it can be a family, it could be neighbors, it could be a Sunday school class, it could be the people in your pew. It could be any number of uh, conglomerations of people, so please uh, feel free to help out the church and provide dinner one night. There's information on the clipboard about how that works exactly. Christmas Eve service will be held at 5 o'clock here in the sanctuary on Christmas Eve. Our Christmas offering will be going to the Lydia Patterson Institute, which is a Methodist school in El Paso, Texas, that helps some of the poorest of the poor in, uh, in El Paso, as well as a number of students that come across from Mexico every day to obtain an education. And then also we're going to start passing the offering plate and the uh, attendance pad. Please pass them around and make sure they make, make it all the way. And um, I think those are the announcements that I have. So if you would, please, if you're comfortably able to do so, please stand and join me in our call to worship. The earth anticipates God's love, born in a village called Bethlehem. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. The love born in a village called the city of David is the love that greets us now. Our first hymn this morning, He is Born.
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Jesus is near, despite all the busyness, the pressure, and the assault of our senses that so often passes for Christmas. We have the promise of Scripture that Jesus is near. When the shopping drains us physically and the spending drains us financially, we forget which party we're supposed to attend on which day. When we think we can't stand to hear rocking around the Christmas tree one more time, then we remember to rejoice and again rejoice. And we light candle that burns with the light of joy. May joy fill our hearts as we welcome the light of the world.
I am the angel Gabriel. When Elizabeth, Zechariah's wife, was about six months along during her pregnancy, God sent me to the city of Nazareth in Galilee. I was sent to a girl named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph. She was the cousin of a woman named Elizabeth. When I visited Mary, I said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was rather frightened, so I said, Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. She asked how that could be, since she wasn't yet married. And I told her that the Holy Spirit would come upon her, and the power of the Most High would overshadow her. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. I told her, too, that her cousin Elizabeth was also going to have a baby, even though she was rather old. Mary didn't hesitate and said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. When she had said this, I departed. I am Joseph of Nazareth, and I was engaged to Mary. Before we were married, she became pregnant. I didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm just a man. I thought I would divorce her quietly. I didn't want to dishonor her, but I didn't see how I could marry someone who was already expecting a baby. But one night in a dream, an angel of the Lord came to me and said, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The angel said Mary would have a son, and we were to name him Jesus. This was to fulfill the Lord's promise that God would give us Emmanuel, God with us. I woke up from the dream and believed what the angel had said, so I took Mary as my wife. Then Caesar Augustus sent out this decree saying everyone had to be registered for a tax and that we all had to go to our hometown. So we had to travel to Bethlehem, the city of David. I took Mary with me. It was a hard journey because it was close for the time for Mary to have the baby. Bethlehem was very crowded, and we couldn't find any place to stay. Suddenly, Mary said the baby was coming. One kind innkeeper said we could stay in his stable, and so we did. It was in the stable that our son, God's son, was born. We wrapped him in strips of cloth and used a manger for his bed. I remember what the angel said, and so we did as I was told. We named the baby Jesus.
I am Mary, the mother of Jesus. My story is one of wonder and amazement. I was a young girl engaged to Joseph, and then an angel came to me and told me I was to give birth to a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine how confused and surprised I was? Really? How could this be? I wasn't even married yet. How in the world was I going to explain this to Joseph? The angel told me to not be afraid. He told me God wanted to use me to fulfill his promise. He also said I was favored by God. Then he told me that my older cousin, Elizabeth, was going to have a baby. I went to see her, and as we greeted each other, the baby inside her leaped. Then Elizabeth said something strange. She said, I was blessed. I wound up staying with Elizabeth for three months before I went home. When Joseph found out that I was going to have a baby, he wanted to divorce me. But he is a good man, and he wanted to do it quietly so I wouldn't be ashamed. But then he had a visit from an angel, too. The angel explained that this was all part of God's plan to bring a savior to the world. Joseph believed the angel and married me. We then had to go to Bethlehem because of a decree from Caesar Augustus. So right before the baby was born, we had to make this very long, hard journey. The city was so crowded, we couldn't find anywhere to stay. And of course, you guessed it, that's when the baby started to arrive.
I am an angel. I was with the host of angels who appeared to the shepherds in the hills near Bethlehem as they kept watch over their flocks on that holy night. When the shepherds saw us, they were filled with fear. So I said to them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will recognize him by this sign. He will be wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. When I finished telling the shepherds this wonderful news of Jesus' birth, a whole band of angels joined me in singing praise to our God. And together we told the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. The shepherds were so excited and full of wonder as we returned to heaven. I am a shepherd. I was with my friends that night watching the flocks when we were startled by this dazzling light in the sky. And then, all of a sudden, there was a whole multitude of angels. It scared the daylights out of us. We couldn't believe our eyes. Then one of the angels spoke to us. Believe it or not, an angel spoke to us and told us to not be afraid. We were told that we would find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a manger in the town of Bethlehem. Really? To think the Savior of the world would be born in a stable somewhere in Bethlehem. Yet there we were, right in the middle of a host of angels singing praises to God. Then, when the angels went back to heaven and we couldn't see them anymore, we talked it over about what to do. I quickly said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So we left in a hurry and found the place and the baby just as the angel said we would. There, in the middle of the night, in a stable, lying in a manger, was a baby boy, the Savior God had promised. Watching over him were Joseph and his mother Mary. We told them about this amazing visit from the angels and the message they gave us about their tiny baby. They were just as amazed as we were. I mean, God told us, lowly shepherds, this wonderful news. As we left them and went on our way, we were glorifying and praising God for all that we had heard and seen, and we told everyone we met about this wonderful night and the news we were given. I am one of the Magi, or wise men. Actually, we are stargazers. In our time, astronomy and astrology went hand in hand. We followed the patterns of the stars very closely. You might even say, religiously. We had seen an unusual new star in the sky and knew that it told of the birth of a special king. So we left our homes and followed it. We came to Jerusalem and asked where the new king had been born as we wanted to celebrate and present him with gifts. King Herod asked us all kinds of questions because he wanted to know exactly when we had seen this star. As we talked with him, he called for his priests and scribes and asked them where this new king was to be born. When they told him Bethlehem in Judea, he asked to meet with us secretly. He told us when we found the child, we were to come back and tell him where the king was so he could go and worship him too. We continued on our way following the star 
and it led us to Bethlehem, where we found the child and his parents. We fell down to our knees and paid homage to this child king. We brought our gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and laid them at his feet. After we had paid our respects and presented him with our gifts, we were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, so we left by another route and returned to our home. Little did we know that Herod planned to kill the newborn king. He got no information from us, as we knew that he was the king of kings and lord of lords. We would like to thank all of the kids and the youth and the choirs and the directors and the narrators and everybody who helped to make today's program a resounding success. As we uh, conclude the service this morning, a reminder that you're invited to the fellowship hall for lunch following worship. Kids are asked to pick up a bag either here or in the fellowship hall. And if you're comfortably able to stand, please do so as we sing together, Joy to the World. <laughs> 